Hi, I'm Maggie Kuhl on the communications team at the Michael J. Fox Foundation. MJFF is the world's largest nonprofit funder of Parkinson's research, and we support studies to better measure, understand, and treat Parkinson's disease. Today we're announcing 39 research projects directing 7.7 .7 million to scientists around the world to advance their promising research projects and drive new treatments to patient hands. Here with me to discuss those projects is our Senior Vice President of Research Programs, Dr. Mark Frazier. Hi, Mark. Hey, Maggie. So the 39 new projects span our goals to better understand, measure, and treat Parkinson's. Let's start with measure. There are some innovative ways to get at Parkinson's in this new uh, portfolio. Yeah, we'd love to have more objective ways to measure Parkinson's disease and the changes that occur with the disease. Uh, one of those ways that we're about to fund is an eye scan that is trying to visualize this protein alpha-synuclein in the eye. Uh, we know synuclein plays a big role in Parkinson's and um, there's some evidence that it clumps up in the eyes of people with Parkinson's. So this project is trying to develop a really simple eye scan that can visualize this accumulation of synuclein protein in the eye. That sounds easier than a blood test or a brain scan. Right. What are the advantages? Well, obviously, it's a lot easier than a spinal tap or a blood test. There's no needles, um, no big magnets for imaging. Um, so it's obviously easier for the patient. Mm. Um, we think it may be cheaper to um, deploy um, and more accessible. So in addition to predicting disease, we also want to predict symptoms because everyone has such a different experience with Parkinson's. There's one about dementia. Tell me about that. Um, so this project that we're about to fund is trying to develop um, easier ways to measure um, activities of daily living like folding laundry or putting dishes away and changes in those tasks may predict someone that might develop dementia and you can imagine with this tool mm -hmm. um, you may be able to intervene earlier um, provide care at an earlier stage and really just um, guide the family and the person with Parkinson's mm -hmm. on how to um, proceed. Yeah, like you said, a huge impact for the person with Parkinson's and their family, but also for research? Yeah, this would be huge in the research field because it would enable you to enroll individuals that are at risk for developing dementia and have a um, more pure population to test your intervention. Speaking of trials, we are testing one on speech therapy using new technology. Yeah, this is a really innovative approach that we're about to support in the Netherlands. It's a three-year project trying to address speech impairment that occurs with Parkinson's. Um, it's a remote approach, so using a phone app and a virtual therapist that provides a personalized treatment to the patient. So in, uh, in about three years, we'll know whether um, this can be deployed more widely um, if it's successful. It's, it's really hard to uh, treat everyone where they are, so having more remote interventions would be really exciting. Another thing that I've been hearing a lot about is drug repurposing taking drugs approved or in testing for one disease and repurposing them for Parkinson's or another condition. Yeah, there's a couple of different projects that we're funding. One that we're about to start funding in Michigan that is looking at an asthma drug um, to see if it can treat the symptoms and prevent the progression of Parkinson's disease. Um, there was a recent report last year that showed that people with asthma may be at lower risk for developing Parkinson's. So this work is following up on that report and really testing uh, whether these asthma drugs actually affect the underlying pathology in Parkinson's disease. Okay, let's uh, shift one more time to talk about understanding Parkinson's. If we can better understand what causes Parkinson's, it might be easier for us to stop it. People talk about pesticide exposure and how that is a huge risk factor for Parkinson's disease. Right. What's the new study into that? Yeah, this is a really cool study in California that is analyzing already collected blood samples from people that have been exposed to pesticides and people that have not been exposed to pesticides and looking at the changes in the blood to see if there are changes that both correlate with pesticide exposure but also the development of Parkinson's disease. So this could be a really useful diagnostic test that could predict risk. So you, uh, your staff, and the advisors have chosen these 39 research projects. What happens next? 
Well, we'll um, support the research, we'll k kick off the projects, and then um, we will manage the projects along the way to make sure that the science is going well and make any course corrections if it's not. Um, and already our team is starting to review the next batch of funding proposals that will be awarded this fall. All right, well, thank you so much, Mark. You bet. Thanks, yeah. Maggie. And thank you for your support of Parkinson's research. Visit michaeljfox.org to learn more about these projects and how you can play a role in speeding the cure for Parkinson's disease.